Hi, I'm Kate and I'm a fisheries biologist with Skeena Wild Conservation Trust. And this is our first in-season fisheries update video of the year for July 11th, 2025. So in this video, we'll go over some of the salmon returns that we're seeing to the Skeena and other North Coast systems so far this year, as well as some of the fisheries occurring and environmental conditions that we're seeing so far this summer. The information that I'm sharing in this video comes from Fisheries and Oceans Canada, First Nations Fisheries Programs, in particular the Niska Fish and Wildlife Department, as well as the Alaska Department of Fish and Game, the province of BC, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration in the US. And just before we dive, in, dive into everything, a reminder that if you are going fishing, please check the current regulations before doing so, and we'll provide some links below for where you can find that information. So kicking things off with Skeena sockeye, it is still early, but based on the TAI index, sockeye are currently tracking very similar to last year at this time, as well as the long-term average. As of July 9th, an estimated 230,000 large sockeye were past the TAI, and the updated in-season estimate for total run of sockeye was around 1.8 million, which is lower than the preseason forecast of 2.7 million, but still right around or just below the long-term average of two to two and a half million. As I said, it is early and the enhanced component of the run returning to the Babine spawning channels is just starting, which makes up a significant component of the total run. Since the in-season return to Canada estimate is greater than 1.05 million sockeye, which is the trigger for commercial fisheries, there was an opening on July 9th and 10th for marine demonstration fisheries in Area 4, followed by the first opening for the Area C gillnet fishery in Area 4 on July 12th and 13th. Starting last year in 2024 and continuing into this year, Recreational fishing for Skeena sockeye was aligned with the commercial trigger, so we are expecting a fishery announcement for the opening of the recreational sockeye fishery to follow. If you're looking for the most recent information on any particular fishery opening, the best place to check is the DFO Fishery Notices website, where you can search by region and fishery of interest, and you can also subscribe to get notices directly to your email. It's great to see that based on the Thai index, Skeena Chinook are looking relatively good compared to recent years. However, they are still well below the long-term average of about 100,000, but quite a bit higher than last year at this time. And as a reminder, the preseason forecast for this year was about 26,600 Chinook. It is too early to say much for Skeena Coho, Pink, Chum, or Steelhead, but early indications in the Taiyi are for a strong pink return. There are some hints of steelhead in the Taiye test fishery, but again, it is very early and the index is much lower than it was at this time last year, which was a year we saw a significantly improved return of summer run Skeena steelhead of about 35,000 compared to the previous five years of concerningly low returns. Something that was great to see earlier this year was a much increased water level in Babine Lake over the winter and spring after two years of extremely low water levels. Now the water level is below average again, but still higher than it was at this time last year. And in the Skeena River, water levels are near average for this time of year. Nass sockeye were tracking below average early in the season, but as of July 8th are right around average with an estimated 98,000 past the Niska fish wheels. The preseason forecasts range from 331,000 to 685,000 Nass sockeye with a point estimate of 476,000 and an updated in-season run size estimate should be available soon. Nash Chinook estimates are tracking below average, which is similar with recent years, with an estimated 7,000 Chinook past the fish wheels as of July 8th, compared against a 30-year average of about 14,000 on the same date. And it's also too early to say much for Nass, Pink, Chum, Coho, and Steelhead. There have been commercial fishery openings in Area 3 for the gillnet fishery on July 2nd and 3rd, as well as 9th and 10th, and for the seine fishery on July 7th and 8th, both of which can retain pink, chum, and sockeye salmon. Water level on the Nass has been tracking fairly similar to last year and has been near or below average so far this season, except for a high water period which occurred from June 22nd to 25th. Similarly, water level at the Mesiadin fishway has been slightly below average, 
and was about 1.31 meters on July 7th compared to an average of about 1.36 meters. And water temperature has been right around average as well at 15 degrees Celsius. In Southeast Alaska, the District 101 gillnet fishery, which intercepts salmon bound for the NAS, was open from June 29th to July 3rd and again from July 6th through 10th. Catches during the first week for most species were below the 10 year average, but for chum were far above the 10 year average. The Southeast Alaska Persane fishery also opened in early July with an opening in the 104 district, which is where most interceptions of Canadian bound salmon occur on July 6, which is about one week earlier than in 2024. Unfortunately for us, there was good fishing for this time of year with about 44,000 salmon caught in a one day opening in district 104. There is another opening on July 10th. It has been a relatively cool spring and early summer in both the Skeena and Nass, but it was a year of low snowpack. So as of mid-June, the Skeena Nass snowpack was at about 20% of normal for that time of year, which puts us at an elevated drought risk for the summer. However, we are in an ENSO neutral period, which means that sea surface temperatures in the North Pacific are near average for this time of year. And that is expected to continue through the summer and possibly into the winter, or there's about an equal chance of entering another La Nina period, which is typically associated with cooler and wetter conditions and generally considered beneficial for salmon at sea. Thank you so much for watching this video. We'll have another update in a couple weeks. And in case you missed it, you can also check out our preseason video that we put out for additional information on what we're expecting to see later this summer. And as always, please reach out to us with any questions at info at See you next time.